Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and this one isn't going to be a terribly long one but I have been asked to once again take a peek at the MSFS 2020 map enhancement which changes the map scenery from Bing Maps to Google Maps. And today we're going to see if we can determine which one is better. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides, as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. All right, guys, so as I said, this is the MSFS 2020 map enhancement tool that can be found on flightsim.to. A link to this mod will be found down in the description below. The first thing I want to make very, very clear is that we all take note of the disclaimer. The methods mentioned in this tutorial are for research and learning purposes only. The developer is not responsible for any legal liabilities and losses caused by using or expanding this tutorial method. My purpose of making this video is to merely show the differences between the default and using this add-on, and I will not say one way or the other whether or not you should continue to use one or the other. I will be giving my final thoughts on the add-on at the end of the video. So, with that in mind, let's talk about what it does. Again, what it essentially does is replaces the Bing map tiles found in the default setup with Microsoft Flight Simulator with Google Maps scenery tiles and satellite imagery. It does it very, very quickly and on the fly. The installation process is rather very simple, although it does recommend that you leave the uh, installation directory as default. Um, I did do so. Now, the really cool thing about this particular add-on is, again, it does everything on the fly with a simple click of a button. There are a couple other configuration settings that you can set inside but are optional. Um, it works very, very nicely, although I do recommend a high-speed internet. Uh, if you do not have the fastest of internet speeds, there is an option to cache the scenery tile prior to the loading of the scenery itself. And then just a moment here, we're going to take a look at some comparisons. Overall, I found that the comparisons are not necessarily what I would say greatly enhanced over the Bing satellite imagery. I find that the Google imagery seems to be, in Microsoft Flight Simulator at least, uh, very comparatively uh, the same. Now, I don't know if that is because the satellite imagery may have been updated in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I do remember when I tried this out a while ago, there actually was a pretty significant difference. However, we did two tests today. We are going to start out by taking a look at Los Angeles International Airport in California, and then we will looking at we will be looking at Princess Juliana Airport out in the Caribbean. Uh, I did my best to sort of mix it up a bit, but still showing water signs at uh, both locations so that way you guys could make hopefully the best decision for yourself. I also will be making sure to point out a couple of artifacts that tend to take place with using the MSFS 2020 map replacement tool. All right, so here we are in LAX with the mod disabled. Now, obviously, guys, you can load this one up very, very easily without having to do any kind of changes or any kind of goofy scenery things. You know, it's just the default Los Angeles airport. Now, pay attention to coloring, pay attention to the striping, pay attention to the foliage in the background, the skylines. I tried to keep everything right about the same time frame of day as well. This is with the uh, live weather disabled. I didn't want anything changing. Um, and then here is with the mod. I do notice a bit of the darker greens. There's a little bit more definition to the greens and the foliage and the surrounding area. Um, however, when we start getting away from the airport, this is where things start to get interesting. So this is again with the mod on. Okay, we're now at, I don't know, give or take about 6,000 feet. Um, over at the same place. We're still over Los Angeles Airport. We're just past the airport, I should say. Heading towards the mountainside out to the uh, north there. Um... Again, pay attention to the coloring, pay attention to the hues, you know, look at the your dark, your, your grays, your greens, that's what you're really going to be looking at, and that's where we're going to see a bit of difference, that's where I've seen a bit of contrast, okay, everything with Google Maps seems to be a bit darker, a bit more refined, so now we're back to the default scenery, however, up at altitude, you notice that the differences are far uh, more subtle. I don't notice quite as big of a pop as I noticed down low. And even down low when we were at the bottom of the airport, you know, just scraping the taxiway, if you will, 
um, I didn't notice a huge difference. Now I will say that I did notice an impact in frame rate. However, I don't know how much of that has to do with the internet connection based on the fact that I wasn't doing any kind of data caching. I have my lab live caching turned off. By the way, we are also using the ultra settings in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Here is without the mod coming into Princess Juliana. To speak real quick with my graphic settings again, that is ultra settings. The only thing I have is um, motion blur and depth of field is disabled. So again, this is the default Princess Juliana out in the Caribbean. Nothing changed. Everything is just as it would be with a stock Microsoft Flight Simulator. I even disabled the add-on uh, airport scenery that I had for this one. Okay, just like a lot of the other satellite imageries, you have uh, boats and traffic like things down, unfortunately, underneath the water. Hopefully that's something that gets resolved later on because it does sort of kill the scenery for me. But again, paid very close attention to the coloring. I think the coloring is the biggest change that I've noticed, and it really depends on where you are, how valuable that color change actually is. So let's just sit tight here for a second, and uh, we're getting ready to swap over to with the mod back on, and this is where things get really interesting. Notice the tile switching there. You can actually see the tiles actively being replaced. Um, and now that's going to be based on how low you are. There's actually a definition in a lot of these. We saw it very similar with X-Plane 11 too, where if you were doing the exporting or importing, I should say, of external scenery, you had to select the depth of the tile, meaning the lower you got, the more high definition it was. If you see here, I get up much, much higher, and it even goes back to the default scenery quite a bit. We stop replacing things as often, go up very, very high, and things changed quite significantly. Now, this is a replaced tile because it, the one thing that I focused on was that goofy looking ship that was over there in the left on the water, and now it is gone. So I do know that the ship or the scenery did in fact change. Um, but it comes down to, again, um, what you're willing to sacrifice and uh, what kind of oddities you're willing to experience when it comes to the use of this particular add-on. My personal opinion at this point, honestly, is I think that I find that um, I don't think it's worth the oddities that I'm seeing. And I don't think it's worth, um, in this particular scenario, um, some of the, I mean, there you go right there. You can see sort of the aircraft sticking out on the taxiway. Um, just some things that will be a very significant immersion breaker. Now, I have some final notes on that that I want to talk about as well, so stick with me. All right, so some final thoughts here for a minute. Um, first off, I want to make it very clear that I am in no way putting down the developer's work here. I think it's really coming down to a matter of preference. Um, as far as the goofy artifact and that we were seeing at Princess Juliana, I'm sure that there are th tons of things that are coming into play there. Internet speed, um, you know, rate of camera movement, all that good jazz. Um, I'm sure caching the uh, scenery would make a huge difference there. Um, the tile quality, I'm not sure. But uh, I know that I have used this tool before and didn't run into those particular issues. So I'm sure there's a couple other things at play here. And I know that my internet speed actually today has been a little goofy. It's not near as high as it normally is. Um, so keeping that all those things in mind. So I really think it's going to come down to what your preference is. I think the hard part about this is going to be is, is I also think it's going to determine what part of the region or what region of the world that you're that you're referring to and what part of that region is going to determine what tiles are better. So I think that's where this tool becomes a little bit more on the cumbersome side is some areas are going to be better with Bing, some might be better with Google. Um, and I think that's just going to make that even more of a, of a PIA. Um, but I did want you guys to see the latest of it. Again, the installation process is extremely simple. The reversion process is extremely simple. Okay, so you install it, you hit uh, the start flying button, you launch Microsoft Flight Simulator, you check it out. Nope, I don't really want to use Google. I'm not liking it in this area. You close Microsoft Flight Simulator, you hit stop mod on the, on the software, you relaunch Microsoft Flight Simulator, and you're back to the Bing Maps. So very, very simple. No messing with files, no messing with anything in the community directory. Very, very easy to use and determine. So I would definitely say to give it a shot, guys. You know, you may find an area of the world that you really, really like significantly better with this tool. Um, just remember, this is just simply an option for you guys. 
um, and I like to present as many options as you can when it comes to flight simulation, all the mods, tools, and add-ons that are currently available. Uh, to the developer, keep up the fantastic work. It's got to be very difficult creating tools like this. I truly appreciate the effort and the ease that you have created uh, for the end user in this. This is fa uh, absolutely fantastic tool. I think it really is. It's got a ton of potential. I think it really is just going to come down to the end user and what your guys' preference is. Let me know which one you guys prefer. Let me know what your thoughts are on it, what areas are best. If there's an area that I, you think I should check out, by all means, shout it out, guys. As always, stay safe and healthy, and I'll see you in the next one.